आई कुड संडी से ओ मैन मैन आई एम रोमानी आई वांट टू बाय माय डैड अ फेरारी बट डैड बोलते गुड़गांव में कहां चलाऊंगा इसको मैं व्हाट आई गोना डू विद अ फेरारी इन गुड़गांव डूड आई कुड थिंक आई एम सुपर सक्सेसफुल एंड मे बी शाहरुख खान एंड मिस्टर बच्चन हु आर यू नो द गॉड्स ऑफ व्हाट दे डू मे बी दे थिंक दे आर अनसक्सेसफुल मेरी जिंदगी में the things that have worked are only the things i've done for myself and that's the truth we want to hear volatility we want to hear roller coaster emotions so do the work and do it now do it now welcome to take a pause with me varun dugirala so this episode has been a long time coming What? weirdly enough you and i have never done a podcast together in person we did one i remember way back early pandemic it was a zoom thing yeah but uh, i'm a little heartbroken obviously that the first time was not special for you because it always is mm. because there we was the first paparazzi. time we spoke at paparazzi there was for the happen. first time in person in that car studio when you used to have the other podcast because the fact is now varun mm. you have become a loose moral podcaster <laughs> right you uh, are what in the old western films we would call a podcasting harlot mm-hmm. right because you've had so many podcasts yeah. and so many guests and so many studios and so many setups and so many exits yes. and so many companies and so many millions that you don't remember that we had done one in, in that the IBM studio, studio. now that's I right right and I forgot yeah you did but i remember mm. because for me that was a special night It was recorded. Now it reminded me of a special night now, <laughs> which is why we swap places today. You're sitting where I normally sit in this podcast. Yeah, I, and for no reason, I just felt like once in a while you should just kind of mix things up. Yeah. So that's why I got you uh, sitting on that side. Yeah. So I feel like my right profile is nicer. So I want to go back to childhood. I want to go back to um, back in the early 1940s. Early 1940s, <laughs> when the young Gaurav Kapoor got on to stage for the first time. What was the first time you got on to stage? There would have been a moment saying one second. I love this. I want yeah, to. I remember that very clearly. What is it? Uh, I have a picture, in fact, on my uh, desk. Uh, I'll try to scan it and send you. But it's not as much as a picture as a charcoal drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, because mm-hmm. he was alive then. <laughs> uh, this was when I think I was three or four years old, perhaps mm-hmm. three, two. I don't know. Some, some such primary kind of. Sc- I was born in in Mumbai, mm-hmm. Bombay then. So everybody, calm down. I was born in Bombay. This mm-hmm. was in school in Bombay, probably somewhere in this area, and it was a fancy dress contest. Mm. And I was dressed up as a mobile general store. Okay. My mum and dad's ingenuity. It's very clever. Mm. So <laughs> I was basically I was wearing like this kurta and mm. pajama, mm. and I had like things just they just stitched on things to me. So it was like a toothpaste and yeah. chewing gum and a chocolate oh. wrapper and stuff like that. And <coughs> my mum's sewing kit was here as a cash register, mm-hmm. and it said, uh, "Aaj nagat kal udhar." <laughs> and uh, i had to go on stage I had to lift my arms because there were things dangling from here like lijjat papad and yeah. noodles and what all and i had to go on stage uh, open my arms like that and twirl and say i am a mobile general store second prize baby who was first <laughs> i can't remember man but he must have been like some lord commander or something <laughs> yeah. i don't know must have been some darth vader dude cuz i don't think you can beat that kind of yeah. ingenuity that's a, like a genuine like also the fact that the arms would come out and you have something yeah. there that yeah. seems well, like i feel like maybe it was the principal's kid who came first or something nepotism yeah. or some such yeah. uh, but that was one and i remember doing that uh the second time i did that cuz then we would move to delhi and hey why not rehash a good idea mm. right so i think i did it for Uh, the next class that mm. I was, I did it for that as mm. well. And I remember when I was in the audience, there was it was bigger, so there was a stage, mm. and there was a mic. So the person came and spoke on a mic, and it had an orange uh, wind pop. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed, and it magnified your voice. Yeah, it was the first time I'd seen a microphone being used. Like mm. I was four or five years old. I'd never really never seen it up close, yeah. up front, yeah. right? Maybe you've yeah. seen it on TV or something, but just yeah. there. and i remember i remember going up on stage and i got to say my line with that i got obs- it was the first time i held the mic yeah i was like i love this yeah i i will never forget that visual and i'm so glad you brought it up because i don't think i've thought about this in really long yeah. but that that image is so vivid in my head it was a black mic with that orange kind of pop it's almost like a yeah. like a cone like a candy kind of you want to bite it and yeah. i was just obsessed with it i just loved microphones yeah. so i loved being on stage i loved the even when i was in school college everything yeah. i just loved doing that yep i 
I have a fancy dress competition story as well, but mine went on the other tangent. I was this confident kid, always wanted to be on stage. I had actually, I think in the second standard, done a double role on in a play where I was Lord Vishnu and Mohini, because Lord Vishnu turns into Mohini to, there's that old Basmasura story of where um, this Rakshasa is, uh, is praying and I think Lord Shiva comes in front and saying, what do you want? You've been praying yeah. for something. So I'm, whatever I touch um, should turn into gold. Yeah. Um, and he says, I'll give it to you. And he tries to touch Lord Shiva to make him into gold. And so you can see he becomes a stone. Right? So he, run, he runs away and comes to Lord Vishnu and says, okay, man, you made a bit of a mistake. Like, you, know, you didn't think this one through, so I'll sort it out for you. And he goes as this um, lady called Mohini. Yeah. And, uh, and she says, I, I can dance. It's one of the dance-off situations that happens. Ah, Mohini, yeah. the, the song, yeah. Ek, do, teen. Yeah, yeah. Not that Mohini, but close enough. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. So then this one, she, in one of the steps she does, which she's trying to mimic, she touches her head. So he touches his own head. Yeah. And he becomes... Cool. So I played nice. both Vishnu, and Lord Vishnu and Mohini. Mohini. So Mohini. I was in this whole point, okay, this is my stage. This is what I'm going to do. The next year, I decided to do a fancy dress competition. I dress up as... Uh, village bumpkin, as they used to call it at that time. I Not don't know if bumpkin, you, bumpkin. Bump, bump, bumpkin, no. Yeah. Were you the village bumpkin? Bumpkin, bumpkin, <laughs> bumpkin, one of those. And I just froze. I was on stage in front of the entire school and I said, Mummy, I don't want to do this. And I cried and ran off stage. Oh. Didn't get back on stage till my late 20s. Wow. Yeah, the, I just like ran away from So it's very like tangential when you say. You were like 20 years, you were froze Khan. Yes. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Dad. Do you know that I was, I'm obsessed with Feroz Khan, by the way? Why are you obsessed with Feroz Khan? Because he just is the kind of, you know, larger than life kind of, you know, when you talk about confidence, that's the kind of confidence one wants in life but yeah. can never have. Yeah. And the confidence to cast Mukesh Khanna, who's 10 years younger than you, as your dad in Yalgar. Yalgar. He's like, Dad. <laughs> He's like, He's 15 years younger. We should, somebody should Google that. What is the age difference between Mukesh Khanna and Feroz Khan? In Yalgar. It, it, no, in life. In life, like, actually. Yeah, there are years that they were obviously, Feroz Saab is no longer around. But, but he was like a cowboy. A like he, he, you, know, he a, you know this, obviously you know this, the fireplace. Dude, the fireplace in Juhu. Yeah, he had a fireplace, fireplace in his in house Juhu. in Juhu. It's amazing. So the air conditioning had to be so high because he wanted a fireplace. You sit with anybody old school uh, film industry, hmm. And they will just tell you all these stories. Yeah. Uh, the Kapoor brothers, mm. Feroz Khan. Yeah. You know, those were people who really lived their life. I remember the the, the last time we did, this, uh, we did this podcast called Useless Information, which I was hosting briefly. Yeah, and we spoke about paparazzi for like, what, half an hour, 40 minutes or whatever. That is right. And I think we, <coughs> this is one of the points that came up at that time is that there are things that interest us which seem useless. Yeah. But they just give us so much. In, you enjoy them, but I feel they're also great to know because that's what makes conversations interesting. Like imagine if every conversation was only meaningful, but damn boring. The most meaningless existence, according to me, is hunting for meaning in every moment. Hmm. Silly. Yeah. It'll come to you. Just let, it, just relax, be open. Yeah. Right. But if you go hunting for it all the time, you're not going to find it. You're going to be poking a spear into bushes. Yeah. And I mean that. Yeah. Metaphorically, not literally. Yeah. But though, if you want to poke your spear in a bush, <laughs> who am I to judge, man? Yeah. <laughs> and it, I feel that's also what <laughs> makes... I'm thinking think about that? someone poking a spear into a bush. Um, but that also is what makes... Just like having conversations with people, you being on stage, yeah. you doing... Every single thing that you know, it all connects together because you don't make any everything about the thing yeah, you make it about all the stuff that just aids the thing to be more entertaining. Yeah, you make everything about nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah. about everything. Yeah, it's just that, right? I mean, that's life is stories. Life is trying to draw lines between things that you don't seemingly connect. It's like hopping from one thought to yeah. the other. Yeah. It's exploring where can I go with this. Yeah. Uh, meeting a person or going into a conversation with a list of what you want to get out of it is. I don't know, man. I know that management books and gurus will tell you that, but I've I've never done that. Yeah. I've not had one relationship in my life, uh, professional or personal. I've never had a meeting in my life where I've gone like, oh, I must get these things out of it, man. Yeah. 
No, because I'm not that kind of person. Maybe there are people for whom yeah. that works, mm-hmm. and you know that whole Tony Robbins kind of thing. Uh, I, I actually have never heard Tony Robbins, so I may just be <laughs> throwing him under the bus. <laughs> Big bus. Yeah. Tony Robbins has to be under it. But yeah, for some people that works for me, it doesn't. For me, it's like, hey, listen, man, we're gonna talk. We're gonna forge a connection either it's going to be really strong or it's going to be like a little rope bridge yeah. and a little dangly yeah. uh, but we will definitely draw a connection that's why we are speaking and yeah. i think that's why both we have kind of our paths have kind of you yeah. know merged on this on this plane yeah. and uh, let's just go with the flow man yeah. i'm a big go with the flow person yeah. is that what because I, i remember talking to you just before breakfast of champions happened yeah right um and before you got in i think you we were shooting the first one yeah which which my, the first one that i shot was and i must tell people that and i've said it in a lot of places but i want to say it on your podcast which is that the first episode happened because of you and rohit because yeah. i was supposed to shoot that i had no idea i had no cameras nothing and uh, big borrow steel as they say in the first things that you want to do and i asked you guys and you guys were very kind enough to say hey we're going to send the crew yeah. and then i know i really confused the crew because i told them to put the cameras and i told them to leave yeah. i was like just here take some yeah, money yeah it was very confused go to starbucks right because i wanted to shoot this in a very different way yeah. so they were like but what i was like don't worry you won't was that gary kustin was the first one gary kustin gary kustin yeah. first episode we shot yeah, yeah. uh six years back or some yeah. such and it was all thanks to you so yeah. once again thank you very much for no, doing I'm, that no and i'm so excited about what that led to because yeah, man. i remember you saying this then you saying that all conversations around cricket end up being about what happens on the field yeah yeah and what you really wanted to do was talk about the stuff beyond the field about yeah. the people yeah and for me that was one of those points that it's opened up in a way for all cricketers to talk about stuff beyond the field yeah because still that is all about the stats or like this is what happened so on the match or, the yeah. fr- uh, or how the drive was i just did one random but anyway yeah. uh, I, I, the hand movement is automatic you can't not do it um but i know you're always been fascinated by the stories that are off the field yep i'm a i'm such a sucker for human stories mm. when i first moved to um, or rather when i came back to the mm. city of my birth mm. one of my favorite things to do because i didn't know my way around places yeah. so what i would do is that uh, I moved to Bandra mm. because the Channel V office was in Bandra. Yeah. It was in Khar. Yeah. And I didn't know my way around places. And <coughs> so what I would do is I would just uh, get into an auto rickshaw and I would just tell them drive. And first of all when you come from Delhi to Bombay at the time and you th- sit in an auto rickshaw and they don't ask you where you want to go they yeah. just go they yeah. don't haggle with you yeah. that itself is such a yeah. this is a better world. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the first world. and they would just get in they drive and i would speak to them mm. so i would speak to them i would ask them about what is this area what mm. is this road when did you come here how long have you been here who are your friends what do you do what's your life yeah and we would just chat and i have been like you know there's a there's a there's a line i say i say mujhe sabki story sunni hai santri se mantri tak right so the guy who's guarding the gate and the guy who's you know ruling the pal- palace i want mm. like just i just love human stories i yeah. feel that's the the richness of experience that uh, i want i want to learn from you yeah. i i want to know what's your motivation why you're doing what you're doing what you envisage as your place in the world perhaps uh, and i i'm i've always I, i'm always i've always been a sucker for that right yeah. uh, and yeah. for for no maybe it's maybe it's a very superficial reason maybe i'm just voyeuristic mm. right or maybe it's a deeper reason because i feel that those those stories enrich me and maybe uh, you know i'm being selfish maybe they will make me a better person maybe i will learn mm. i don't know what the reason is but i i'm just a big sucker for human stories so uh, i think everything i've done uh, i've just always wanted that yeah. so when i was working in cricket broadcasting for 5 6 years i think it just irked me a little bit because uh, you you can't blame anybody because when the game is going on you're talking to a brief you have yeah. to talk to live and if there's a show happening afterwards or before you have to talk about the game that has happened or will just be happening or the game that's going to happen tomorrow so it's very tight and yeah. and and there is no room to maneuver but off the field when i would have conversations with uh, these people these champions i realized that they were so rich in experience a lot of them may not have like come first in class yeah. because they never went to class mm. but they have a very high eq because they've had the school of hard knocks yeah. right they have been on hanging from the back of buses and going in unreserved trains to play cricket matches since they were 8 9 years old and that teaches you about life what a lot of us with slightly 
my cushy upbringing i mean mm. you know we didn't have to do that right i mean we went to school yes in a school bus but we went to a school it was paid for we weren't hanging on the yeah. side uh, so uh, it re- it really teaches them a lot so it really made them very emotionally rich so i i said that why are they not being able to tell their life stories yeah. in any place yeah. so then one day my director of extra innings dhruv varshane mm. uh who is a very dear friend of mine and I used to complain about this a lot so he just said one thing to me he says if it's bothering you so much just do it no mm. you know the the quintessential put your money where your mouth is right so i said hmm that's a good point uh made a couple of calls i had always you know i'd had this thought in my head as how i want to shoot it i want to make a very un tv show yeah. in a time where yeah. there was no digital right it yeah. was just very people, early day, yeah, yeah. people were just talking about it nobody yeah. knew what it was but i said all i know is i know tv hmm. i want to make something which is one upon tv it's oh. just like yeah mathematically i know that's not the opposite so don't come at me uh, but i wanted to do that so that's how that's how that show came along and uh, i never thought it would have eight seasons mm-hmm. that it would become a youtube original obviously you never and anybody, the fact that you still get comments saying when is dhoni coming when is dhoni yeah you never when you i mean anybody, i feel you will never get dhoni just to make people continue to say yeah, that yeah you have to end the show man like i'll just what <laughs> after that right <laughs> Yeah, it just ended then because people will have nothing to say. Yeah, yeah. They're like, "Oh, we're done. Unsubscribe." Yes, right. We're uh, finished with this. Yeah. So I never thought it would be like sixty-five episodes. I never. Anybody who tells you when they start this that this is going to be, they're lying, right? Anybody who tells you that, "Ha, mujhe to pata tha ki sao episode banenge," they're lying. You just, it's literally you put one foot in front of the other and you keep going. Yeah, yeah. Five years back when we did that podcast, you didn't know you'd have like five podcasts and you'd be doing this five years from now. Six hundred plus episodes. There you I go. Mean that, uh, like, I mean, no idea. Yeah. And I remember telling you that I don't know if this is going to be a thing. I'm just doing it for fun. And that's the whole thing. If yeah. you can be lucky enough to just do something for fun every day, everything else will take care of itself, mm-hmm. right? I mean, look at you today. Today you've got like people don't realize this. Six hundred and forty people sitting <laughs> behind the cameras. That's how big the crew has become, <laughs> right? uh but uh how that that time mm. somebody was actually calling you to do it and sit and go away now you know you yeah. pretty much like own the whole operation right but yeah. that's how it comes this didn't happen one day when you and also thankfully you were not silly enough to just get up one day and say i'm going to make 600 episodes of a podcast hire 15 people mm. and do it. you have to do them yeah at their own time mm. there has to be a gestation period it has to come slowly you can't don't don't shock and awe it mm. <laughs> yeah don't yeah right so just go step by step yeah do you also feel like and it, i want to stick to the cricket one because i remember the fact that even when you got onto the cricket bandwagon right yeah yeah and i say bandwagon because it it was like a suddenly like you know we went from like really like it's a bandwagon it's a carnival man yeah because you went from really like a you know cricket used to be this really like you know people would talk <coughs> a certain way yeah man the the meeting shows thief. were like generally like snooze fest uh which nobody wanted to see as much unless you were really hardcore cricket fans hmm. and you suddenly brought you still got the insights but it was just a lot more fun yeah but you've always been a cricket fan uh since i was a kid it's the i did only two things hmm. i watched cricket and i watched uh, hindi cinema it's the only two things i did while yeah. growing up tell me one thing um uh, theater came before fm or fm came uh in the history of the world in i think theater came before in, fm in, in your life but in, in your my life. history uh theater amateur theater came first hmm. so school whatever notanki hmm. drama yeah bhand gaon ka hmm. all that came before but in my professional career fm came before i was a spring chicken man hmm. i was pre pubescent when i started radio and i started it because of our dear friend roshan abbas because yes. fm radio started i used to hear his crackle free voice mm-hmm. on my little dabba to one loved it i had, I had a double deck all right yeah. guys just relax everybody yeah. that's cool uh, with those detachable speakers mm, yeah. right yeah. so on those philips things i uh, i got it on actually i thought my parents got it for my brother and my two birthdays like mm-hmm. we had to tra- do a big trade off to get yeah, that yeah. anywho we used to hear uh, crackle free radio put the antenna up and i used to listen to roshan abbas and i said i really like this mm. then i had a lamp which was much like this mm. exactly like this mm. instead of a mic at the end there was a light yeah. i used to pretend it's a mic because mm-hmm. i've already told you about my obsession with microphones yeah. so while i was supposed to be studying i would just pretend like i was a radio jockey think about oh. it man i was like 15 years old I would pretend I'm a radio jockey. Yeah. 
and because uh, I used to listen to all these people, and I was like, this is really cool, man. Yeah, and that's what I, I want to do. Yeah, really. And you know something? I've got like, I had friends who had family who would come from the US. So I used to get these KC case and mm. tapes, these, you know. Which now comes on one of the radio stations. Though. I think it does, yeah, yes. Yeah. I used to love it. And I was like, this is a really cool thing, man. You can, what do you play music all day and you just like speak and then you just give. That's your job. I just love it, man. And giving just random information and you can crack an odd joke. This is not a real job. Yeah. And someone's paying you money for this. And back in the day in radio, when I was on Times FM, we could decide our own playlist, man. Now, Ooh. of course, there's a software that decides whatever. Yeah. We could actually pick up CDs from the library and say, these are the songs I'm going to play. So the first song I, I ever played on radio was King of Wishful Thinking. Because I genuinely believe that my entire career has just been that. I'm the King of Wishful Thinking. <laughs> I just think, I really want to do this. Do you have any skill? I don't know. Do you have any connections? I don't know. Do you have any inroad? I don't know. Do you think you can do this? I don't know, but I want to do it. <laughs> like a petulant child. You wish your way to it. I just wish my way to it, man. You just gotta, maybe you will your way to it or wish your way to it. I want to say wish because mm. it's just, will seems like hard work. Mm. Whereas wishing your way to it just seems so nice. Life is so rosy. So, you know, I uh, I do this before every episode. So, I've, I've Googled you. Oh, really? And what did it say? You said I'm the laziest, ambitious person you will meet in it's an true. interview. It's true. Explain laziest, ambitious person. So, uh, I decide, so I'm, there's a lot of things I want to do, mm. but I don't want to do them today, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Let's do them tomorrow. Mm. I mean, look at you. Huh? This podcast can I'm take a pause, but you're working like 18, 26 hours a day, man. No. You've got like 16 ventures. I don't know, you and Pooja are just like, I feel like, man, I, I like speak to you for an hour and I need to take a nap. Like, I don't know how you guys do it, right? I'm like, oh shit, I think I'm a little tired now. Man. I'm really like, I've exhausted my work quota for today. Just listening to you guys talk about work. But I, I genuinely, I'm a, I've been a pause guy for years. I decided in all seriousness that uh, working smart was better than working hard. Yeah. And unfortunately, efficiency is and common sense are such uncommon things in India that if you just apply yourself, uh, just sometimes five minutes, five minutes of focused thinking is better than an hour of just doing useless nonsense. Mm. Just everyone's there. Everyone's in the room. Yeah. Bring out your best batter. Bring out the best bat. Bring out your A game and get it done. Don't just, build up to it, just do it. Just get it done, man. Yeah. I don't know why we, like, there is just, inefficiency really gets my goat. Mm. Like, it really does. And now also having been, having been a dinosaur in the media industry, now I've just, I've seen every angle of it, right? Yeah. I've seen radio, I've seen television, I've seen film, I've seen, you know, events, I've seen producing. Yeah. I've seen all of it. So I know that you don't need to do this entire dance. Get it done. Go home. Spend time with your family. Spend time with your friends. Spend time lying on your couch. Right? Spend time doing nothing. Yeah. Spend time partying. Get drunk. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Why do you have to physically be in that? Don't show me that you're working. Show me the work. Right? That's it. Yeah. I don't want to see. I used to. I remember when I started Oak Tree, my content company. I remember somebody emailed me once at, I had told them to work on a, maybe a, let's say it was a presentation or something. And I got a, I got the email at 11.30 at night. Mm. It's okay, cool. I only checked it the next morning. And in office or whatever, I said, why did you, why did you send me this email at 11.30? Mm. He's saying, well, I was working on it till 11.30 at night. I said, but from what time? Mm. Right. Because I told you at 10.30 in the morning, mm. this at best mm. is an hour's work. Maybe two hours work. Yeah. Focused. Hours work. Chill, two hours work. Mm. Why in the devil's name are you working at 11.30? I said, I'm not impressed. I think maybe you send that mail because sometimes there are, there are people who are founders of companies and stuff would get impressed that, oh, look at this kid working Burn at 11.30. midnight oil and all that stuff. I don't get impressed. I think at that time you should have probably been with your friends mm. or you should have been chilling at home or you should have been sleeping, mm. <laughs> right? So why the f*** are you doing this? Mm. There's no reason. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. I'm so, I am ambitious. 
I, I joke about the fact that I'm, I, I think I am, I am lazy, but I guess if you were to put a positive spin to that, mm. it's just that I believe that there's no, I, everything doesn't need to be done today, yeah. right? I think just making a peace with the fact that everything doesn't need to be done today will make us realize that anyway, everything wasn't getting done today. So all you're doing is just frustrating yourself, tiring yourself, setting yourself unrealistic goals. Uh, and yeah, that's what I believe in. So I want to do a lot of stuff, yeah. but yeah. don't want to do it today. I read this interesting thing about laziness and said that your mind is telling you you're lazy when it feels like the effort is not worth the perceivable value you'll get out of the effort. Great. That's a very intelligent way of putting it. Yeah. I, of course, put it in a very stupid way, which is, hey, take a nap, man. It's better than everything. But that's what your mind says. There's no point doing this. Why are you doing this right now? Take a nap. Or like, and so the only way to not be lazy at that point is to say, no, there is actual value. Show me proof. Which is what we should all do, right? Oftentimes you're like, okay, I'll work hard just because you feel like you need to work hard, but you're not working smart. Yeah. You're doing that late night. Yeah. You're doing like, um, I remember there was a, time I think early days at, at MTV for me when I was editing something and I had stayed in office for 15 days because they had bunk beds and I had to sleep there and they had a shower and then one day someone comes saying how long have you been here I said I've been here for like six months like no no how long have you not gone home I said two weeks <laughs> he said why I was working we're all working why are you here for two weeks I said because I'm thought I put in the effort it's like that's what you're putting in effort that's just you telling yourself that that's what yeah. you have to do. Yeah. He said, go home. Yeah. Take a, uh, like, chill with your friends, do something. Yeah. Come back, take a day off, come back. It's fine. Nice. Work will happen. There are other people working on this as well. And I thought that was one of the best pieces of advice I got at a very early, like, intern level stage. When I'm like, I have to show I'm an intern, I'm working really hard. And said, jana tu. You were doing work from home back then, basically. Yes. But yeah. you just made your office your home. Yeah. I used to walk around <laughs> in the morning. I used to wake up in boxers, walking around the office, having coffee and like, had my towel and my like... You know, clothes. HR would have you arrested in today's day and age, right? <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be arrested. I had a sleeping bag. For walking around in your boxes in the office. If you that's the kind of stuff people get arrested for now. That's right? true. That's true. Yeah. I had, I had a sleeping bag, which I would keep in a cabinet. And I would take it out in the night and sleep on it. And then one day I realized I walked into uh, the office and my sleeping bag wasn't there. And I'd forgotten to lock it. And there were these two other people working in the office who were a couple who had decided to take the sleeping bag into another space. And let's just say that sleeping and bag... And to do some sleeping. And so that <laughs> sleeping bag was never used again after that day. Because I was like, I'm not touching that. I'm like, I'm not touching this. Please keep it. Oh, Lord. It's all yours. That's um, pretty... Yeah. Yeah. But that's pretty disgusting and unhygienic of them as well. That's exactly, yeah. Because they have no idea what you've done in that sleeping bag. Nothing. I just slept. We I don't, just slept. We don't know. <laughs> we, I mean, you could have also like... I'm saying alone also you can do, do things which <laughs> render the said sleeping back unhygienic. Swiftly moving ahead from <laughs> this thread that I have only started this conversation. Uh, I will take you down. I will take you down dirty rabbit holes. Tell me something. Not what? literally. No, I would ask you this. Um, dirty rabbit holes. Someone said this today <laughs> and I never asked you this question. Why were so many of the movies that you initially did scary movies? Uh, they weren't. They were intended to be comedies, but they just turned <laughs> out to be. <laughs> it's really scary. <laughs> so when I just question, why is it only? I yeah. Think, I think the first one got done. It's just really <laughs> shitty. <movie. laughs> no, no, they weren't. Uh, you're right. There was a scare. My first two films. First two films, yeah. I don't know which one was. I think one I signed first and the other came out first or some such. Uh, Dharna Manai film. came out first. I, I can't even I think Dharna Manai came out first. I can't even remember. And I, I think, checked Wikipedia, so. No, this is... Oh, by the way, there I'm credited with a few films that I haven't even done. Yeah. But anyway, out of the memorable cinema that I have been a part of, mm. uh, those two films, one was... Shh, shh, mm. Yeah. The I one argued, in the island. Argued endlessly mm. with uh, the director at the time. I was like, sir, but this is not a word. It's a song. It's very difficult to say, you know? Like, yeah. as I'm a... Uh, I'm a big believer. You have to say it, sir. I'm a big believer. Oh, yeah, let's go. Shh. <laughs> it's like what will people what will college kids say to each other like yeah. how do you what do you what do you say so we should add a tagline to yeah. it hai. we were snowed out yeah so and they owned the producers owned that title yeah. Shh, hai. Yeah. 
uh, obviously it was a show on star that time so i don't think they could use it yeah. uh, but i said we should add something and uh, <laughs> i remember this conversation there was dino there was the director pavan and the producer sweetest guys both of them i love them and to date i'm in touch with them mm. uh, uday and siddharth siddharth malhotra then worked with the uh, karan johar and made a film as well step mom mm. he's made a mm. a uh, couple of films so mm-hmm. he was he was a kid at the time and uh, and ode uh, both the producers we were all sitting in one room and we were all ideating and we mm-hmm. said what should we do and the director was not listening i don't think he wanted to add anything to the name anyway long story short they said oh we should add a ta- i said we should add a tag line right mm-hmm. all these films had tag lines on yeah, the yeah. so they said what should we call it i said see there's like dark the fire yeah, bars the fire bars burning danger i was like mm-hmm. we should have some names so we all came up with a few and then we knew it was not going anywhere mm-hmm. so i just said sir we should call it shh the shut up <laughs> <laughs> that shut up the conversation that was the end of that conversation yeah. it was like all right this is not going anywhere yeah. and i remember once uh, my my uh, oldest masi and god bless her soul uh, she called and she said uh, she says beta tumhari wo shoe picture kab aa rahi hai maine kaha shoe to release ke baad padhenge mere ko masi sabhi to iska naam shh hai <laughs> I would keep telling the director I was like nobody can say the name of our film that's true uh, that's but yeah but darna mana is very catchy title yeah and uh, it's amazing people yeah. still remember it and the craziest thing happened at the end of it man I got to tell you this one day I meet Ram Gopal Verma hmm. post the release of this yeah. I was not in the last scene of that film hmm. I was not in the last scene of darna mana when you see the climax everybody's booth comes and mine is missing hmm. they everybody who watched the film thought it was either a a prank that'll pop out of somewhere or maybe i'm alive and i'll be there in mm. the next in the sequel or mm. something what happened was that i was shooting for shh mm. at the time in thailand mm. and the last minute they decided to redo the climax Indeed. and yeah. uh, they said yeah 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 we'll do it cuz ramu was top of his game that mm. time hard task master and nobody told him that i'm not there till the last day yeah. the last day they said sir one actor is not there ramu said screw it there's seven people 10 extra sab ko jayega nobody will notice mm. so climax ho gaya chala gaya luckily for me i found out who everybody who watched the film because they would then text me saying where are you in the last scene man yeah. so i knew all my friends who saw the film because you had to get to the end to do yeah. that and then one day i meet ramu at uh, somebody i think it was manmohan shetty's house and uh, i was big filmy that time i would yeah. be at every event every party everything right so i was there and then he meets me and you know ramu always has this he has he talks if you ever met him he'll talk to you like this Mm. He's completely like side like that. It's okay, like, never straight. It's like a fly. Mm. It's always like, and he's obviously this is a guy who's made like five or six cult films, dude. Yeah. So there's no doubting his genius, right? Yeah. We may think that now he's kind of off some tangent that we don't understand, but there was a time where he yeah. came with Company and Satya and Back to Back Con, one of my favorite films, Rangila, right? They were all they were yeah. all amazing. Anywho, he says. Eh, I think I owe you an apology. I'm like, no, no, why? Why do you owe me? An I'm like 23 at the time. Right? Yeah. Like, why do you, you don't owe me an apology? So, so what? You know, they told me you're not there for the last scene for the reshoot, and I just uh, told them go ahead anyway. I didn't think anyone would notice. But as uh, with a distributor in Bihar, he was watching the movie and he said, where is that buy in the end? I didn't see the film I didn't realize you made such an impression they noticed <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> they noticed you it is one of the I still remember it man yeah. it was yeah. almost 20 years ago yeah. it's still one of the best compliments I've received in my life yeah that one of my favorite filmmakers yeah. said that he didn't realize that my performance would be so good yeah and in a way something he did which was not good for me actually mm. then made him give me that compliment so I'll always yeah. I don't remember. That's my favorite memory of that film. It's such an interesting thing, right? Is that the fact that he says they noticed, yeah. and you don't use that word normally, right? No. You always say like he made an impact. But I think, yeah, because he said that he said I didn't think that anyone would notice yeah. that you're not in the last yeah. scene. And he says they noticed. Yeah. So because he took and I can visualize him saying it right now. He's just like that, and obviously he's shorter than me, so he's <laughs> looking up like that. I think I think I owe you an apology. It's mm. like midnight. Yeah. It's like no. and i couldn't i was so like uh, so then i mean we stayed in touch and then he offered me that two day cameo in ram gopal verma ki aag hmm i've done that man yeah you know i've been to the i'm for the premiere of that movie i was at the premiere that i had to walk out cuz my my 
eardrums were bursting because yeah. I don't know what happened to the background score in that music, but in that film, but it was turned up on ten. That was Amar Mohile Max. Amar Mohile was the person he. Yeah, it was volume max. Amar Mohile has done good music, man. Yeah. It was just I don't know who turned the yeah, volume, volume up, man. Yeah. I was at halfway in the film. I had to leave, and my friends were saying, "Don't you want to watch your scene?" I was like, "I'll I'll see it at some mm. point." This is really loud. Like I get really stressed. I think my dad and me are both the same because I took my dad to an IPL game yeah. once, and he was like. Why is this music so loud? And I said, you've got a really valid point. Mm. I don't know why this music is so loud. It's not a disco. Mm. When you're saying disco, like yeah. I'm 88 years old, yeah. this is not disco thiek. Mm. This is not nights club. Mm. Why is the music so loud? So that's exactly why I left the film. But yeah, that was my. That was my. Uh, we all walk through the fire, man. Yeah. Let who? Mm. Let he mm. who has not yeah. done something dramatic yeah. in his or her life cast the first stone. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's this moment at the start of every mid-match, pre-match, post-match one, and I think this this comes from the extra innings time to now. But how you start is never the way anybody else starts. Because yeah. normally even start, okay, welcome to the yeah, yeah. post-match. You will start with you. You are in the conversation is already in process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you bring it in like I suddenly feel like once again I'm part of this chat. Yeah. There is a vibe which you kind of bring, and, and, and as you were saying that, I, it, that's the first thing that flashed in my head because, yeah. you know, it's like you are saying exactly what we're all thinking in our heads and what we're also saying. Yeah. So it's just like the the screen is no longer a division; it's just yeah. there. Nice. I am so glad you said that and you noticed it because this is something that happens on set all the time. Mm. So Ajay Jadeja, who's like my big brother, and I've been working with him in different channels. And my first TV gig was with him on cricket. He will always, whenever a person will be there, na, he'll always point. So he lo- he gets very tickled by my yeah. opens. Yeah. So he will always be sitting there and saying, "Dek kya karta?" You know, because something unusual has happened. You know, he's like, "Dek dek kya karta? Dek kya karta? Abhi dek kya bolega?" Yeah. And I just love the whole. And they never thought out, right? Because when you are talk, like you're saying, when you're talking to friends, yeah. when you're sitting with six, seven of them watching a game, you haven't thought of this line from an hour before, no? Yeah. Something happened and you said it. Yeah. There's no filter, yeah. right? You're with your with people you trust. Yeah. Now, if I don't treat my audience as somebody I trust, how will they treat me as somebody they trust? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna do it like this. Hopefully. You know, I'll be successful more times than not. Mm. There will be some that will fail. Yeah, they will fall on their face. They will flop. But you pick yourself up, and then you'll go. Just like when you're with friends, yeah. sometimes you say something that people find very funny, and sometimes you'll say something, and they'll go, "Eh, hey, yar, that was very bad. Eh, hey, ganda hai, ganda." Yeah. Hai. Just do that, man. Yeah. And I, I really, I really like doing that. There's also something that my friend Ankur Tiwari told me once about writing. Mm. He said, uh, "Enter a scene late." I'll never forget. We were on a flight once. It was the first thing I ever produced. It was like 2007, 8, and Ankur was directing it. We were going to Delhi. We were coming back, and I was I was wanting to write a film at the time mm. with Siddharth from Cinevista. That mm. was Siddharth Malhotra. I was talking about, and I was writing a movie. And he said he gave me a piece of advice. He said that enter a scene late. I was like, what does that mean? He says that when I'm watching it, mm. I should feel like. Oh, this conversation has been on for a minute. Like yeah. I walked into this scene as a viewer, yeah. and ये तो कुछ already चल रहा है यहाँ पे. And uh, that really, I think, and you are a sum total of the things you hear and learn and absorb and watch and listen. So I think uh, a lot of these things play into yeah. uh, me doing that. And I really like it. And I feel like it loosens up my guests. It loosens up the. It, everybody just yeah. gets like, अरे ये show नहीं चल रहा. Sometimes I won't say. Hi, I'm Gaurav Kapoor, and welcome to whatever the show is. Till almost 45 seconds into it, yeah. sometimes I won't say it at all. Yeah. Like, why you know what you're watching? <laughs> It's <laughs> like, why am I wasting words? Yeah. You know. And that's actually, I was, I think today morning, you know, you you get those, and when you go on a Twitter, you suddenly have people saying, okay, these are things which you need to learn about what is making YouTube videos work today. <coughs> and this first statement, I was like. Isn't this like a fact? Saying, don't tell people facts they already know. Great point. Which is a fact. I don't even know why you're telling people the facts before if they yeah. already know it. Like, like yeah. I would always do this thing in the show where I, we we used to have introductions for the show. I'd talk about my guest and do it. 
Now we don't do that because it is much like they know who the guest is. If yeah. they don't, we'll we'll give like a small tease of that at the beginning. But me saying this is who the guest is, is the audience like, yeah, do I need to stick through this? Yeah, it's like uh, you, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Even with Breakfast with Champions and like 65 episodes that I've done, I have never once looked to the camera and said, "Welcome to Breakfast with Champions." Hmm. Never once. That makes it a show. Never introduce the guest. Yeah. Never said. Then, of course, when uh, you know different formats change, and if it became a YouTube original, and then became a sponsor, Skoda came on board to sponsor, and then uh, obviously I have to say the name mm. of the show because they are the title sponsors. Mm. I said I'll do it in a voiceover. Yeah. Just let it happen on a montage with a voiceover, because people when they listen to a voiceover, they know they're listening to something external. Yeah. So it doesn't disrupt the flow of the show. It's a uh, for a bare bones kind of show that I make it. I always say it's a very carefully constructed, careless look. Yeah, it's like Shah Rukh Khan in Dilwale Dulhaniya. You see mm. his shirt, right? It's yeah. like hanging out from here. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a carefully constructed yeah. look. Yeah. Just all of him. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's what it is. You got to think about these things, and it's such a valid point. Why give them? The fact, the fact is that they've seen the thumbnail and they already know whether they're going to watch it or not. Yeah. After that, you are just saying stuff that. You are just basically trying not to dissuade them uh, and not making them shut the window. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like when two people go on a first date, right? They've already decided. <laughs> They've decided if they're gonna hook up or not. Yeah, right. Then they're just basically waiting for the other person to say something absolutely ludicrous to change their mind. Correct. If you don't and you just play it safe, that's it, man. You book gonna get some action. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also. I feel that's also one thing, right? So when I look at, and I'm fascinated by, I feel I enjoy the the conversations pre, mid, and post matches sometimes more than the matches themselves. Because the <laughs> matches are whatever, right? I'm like I'll watch the highlight, I'll, I'll watch the 15 minute highlight, but I'll watch this in its entirety. So sometimes the duration of content I've watched of a discussion about a match is far longer than the actual match that beauty, I've seen. It's a beauty of sport. And I feel that there is a line which you walk, which I always. Have been intrigued by is that you know there are there are people like let's they're ex cricketers who obviously have perspective. It comes from just the fact that they play the sport. There are people like let's say uh, Joy Bhattacharya, Harsha Bhogle, etc., who come from again like. And there are also kind of people who are like, okay, I've never played the sport. I've also come in to kind of host this conversation, and it feels hosty because you're trying to almost say my job is to only ask the questions. Yeah. It's not have perspective. You have this unique ability of being one with the audience, but you also don't seem like you're not an expert. You yeah. walk that line. Yeah. Is that a conscious thing? I'm a. I'm the only thing I'm an expert in is conversations. Hmm. So I say that I'm there, uh, and the fact is that I don't have any deep study of sport. Hmm. I don't have. I've never done any deep analysis, but I just. Love it more than anyone else, and I can, like, there's no way to quantify it. But if there was, mm. I would challenge anybody, and I would probably come out trumps. It's the way I just love cricket, yeah. and uh, Ajay again, Jadeja always tells all the other ex cricketers, he's like, "Tumhe pata nahi kitna bada kida hai, tu pata nahi kya kya cricket dekhta hai." And I will watch, like, I will watch the Big Bash, I'll watch Vitality. I'll watch uh, some uh, like I have watched pretty much every session of the Ashes, hmm. right? Yeah, I just I love it. I just love it. You give me a a crisp day in the UK and Test cricket happening, and I I'm a sucker. I'll just watch the whole thing. I'll watch it when it happens in Australia. I watched uh, you know I'll watch New Zealand play. I'll watch. I just, I just love watching cricket. Hmm. So for me, I always think that okay, where have I come from? I'm a fan of the sport. I always take myself back to the first conversation I had with Sony for X trainings. Mm. They said, "What is the kind of tact approach mm. you would like to use on the show?" So I said, "I have one problem with cricket broadcasting. Mm. I don't know why you guys think that entertainment is a bad word. Mm. Seems to me on the outside yeah. that things are not allowed to be entertaining." I said, "But why? Why do people watch cricket?" For entertainment, आज तक किसी ने अगले दिन एग्जाम नहीं दिया क्रिकेट के बारे में, right? And they didn't go to class the next day after watching a game and this, you know, had to write a yeah. 500 word essay. Yeah. No, 
I watched it for entertainment. I watched it for fun. So why is nobody having fun? So I said that I would like to have fun, but I don't want to be. Uh, I'm not seeing be bachkana. Hmm. I'm not seeing be. Uh, I'm not seeing be offensive or yeah. disrespectful. I said yeah. there's a fine line between irreverence and disrespect. Yeah. Right. I want to be irreverent. I want to have conversations like people have in their living rooms or sitting on park benches or sitting on the wall and yeah. shaking your leg like you did when you were a kid with your yeah. friends. And uh, I said that's how I want to have them, which is you have a serious conversation in a lighter vein. Hmm. So you're talking about a serious subject, but in the middle you'll crack a joke. Yeah. In the middle you'll say something hmm. silly. Yeah. In the middle you'll say something and somebody will go roll their eyes. Yeah. Right. I said why can't it be like that? Why can't that conversation be a living, breathing? real organism yeah and that's what i like doing with everything like with all conversations no matter if i'm doing a podcast or a show or if i'm on stage uh, hopefully when i'm here it's like can we do that yeah can we none of us are real completely we're not even real with ourselves yeah. but can the conversation at least seem real and value add to somebody who's watching and can we just have some fun for god's sake and they said that yeah we would like to do that i was like okay let's do it and luckily for me i got ajay jadeja navjot singh siddhu sunny bhai mm. i just got all these people who were just such amazing fun they wanted to have fun yeah they were people who had been doing this for really long they were happy to do something new as long as you convince people what they're doing is not ridiculous yeah they're not going to look silly yeah right what's the biggest fear when you try something different Hey man, I'm going to end up looking silly. I look stupid. People laugh at me. If you can convince them that no, I got that, man. I got you, right? Don't worry. We're going to try to explore a new area. If we feel that it's becoming silly, trust me, we'll pull it back. Yeah. Don't worry. It's a conversation. I'll pull it back. As long as people trust you with that, then they go with you. And I think that's what happened. I got very lucky yeah. that they did, or maybe I was just kind of good at convincing them. that flying by the seat of our pants was a good idea <laughs> <laughs> and were there things that specific instances of what any of them told you that okay i won't even call it advice you know just things that they said maybe you should give, give you perspectives on as you kind of got into it which really kind of helped yeah, there was i remember sharipa of course was hmm. sharipa was amazing she <laughs> would just say he would i would say something and it would be fun and so some strange reason i don't know what happened he really took a a liking to me and i was allowed to take more liberties with him hmm. than other people were come on man he was like three time mp at the time right yeah. don't mess with him and uh, he would let me do that and then after you know segments he would just say oh, chote tu hanuman hai tere ko apni shakti ka andaza nahi hai <laughs> and then i realized he was saying this to like 10 other people so <laughs> <laughs> that's how you win elections you have to say nice things to a lot of people yeah uh but i remember you would say that and i would think doesn't matter if he's saying it to 10 people i was like really you think so he says you have no idea and i said you know something i don't want to know man hmm. i don't want to know i actually if there is if you are saying that there is something of mine which is a strength that i don't completely realize yeah. i don't want to realize it because i feel with that could come some sort of complacency or arrogance hmm. that i don't want I want to keep something mysterious. Let it surprise even me. Hmm. It's fine. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, like there are times when I will. So my friends find it amusing. There are times I'll say something hmm. and I'll start chuckling myself. Hmm. I just, you know, what happened here? I was like, I just thought that was really clever. Yeah, right. And I don't say it out of, I don't say it out of pomposity. Hmm. I say it out of genuine surprise. Hmm. Like I've surprised myself. Like I was like I didn't think I was capable of saying something this clever. <laughs> so, they, so, but that's also fun. Now my friends know it's not arrogance. And I'm like, ooh. But that's I think the what I love about that is that you're not doing it for other people. You're doing it for yourself. And I'm, and when you're doing it for yourself, <laughs> you actually enjoy the fact that you surprise yourself or that you you give yourself that thing. You and because you're not necessarily doing it for outside. You're so right. मेरी ज़िंदगी में the things that have worked are only the things I've done for myself. जब पर्सनल पेन पॉइंट कोई आया तो उठ के कुछ किया उसके बारे में शौक था यू हैड जेनुअन इंटरेस्ट एंड ओनली दोज थिंग्स एनी थिंग आई हैव डन 
for ulterior motives for reasons which are not entirely pure i've not really wanted to do it and mm. just maybe money i don't know uh those things are never worked mm. so i've made my peace with that mm. luckily for me i have uh, areas of interest which are broad yeah. so therefore i can be interested in a wide variety of things yeah. uh, but i realized that about myself i was like boss agar apna man lag raha hai agar acha lag raha hai to karo mera you know i did a it was so funny i did a test the other day almost like a, a cosmo quiz but not really mm. uh, which was uh, which was like a right brain mm. left brain test yeah and mine actually came almost half half it was like 50 on 49 right which is quite we need to do one of these tests yeah i'll send it to you yeah. it was really interesting because it was uh, so it wasn't exactly as superficial and vacuous as one of those hmm. cosmo quizzes yeah. right because we've done a few of those as well uh but it was quite it was like almost 50, 30 40 questions and you kept picking and then i realized that i am obviously a creative entrepreneur hmm. right so i'm a storyteller as well yeah. but i believe in the whole balance between art and commerce yeah ranjit raina told me this was another common friend of ours told hmm. me this many years ago when he was studying filmmaking in the la he said in the la when he was studying filmmaking in la he says there's the the french hmm. school of cinema and there's the us school of cinema right yeah. the french school of cinema just says art that it has to be art it's art it's art and uh, the american school of filmmaking will say without commerce art is bullshit yeah. right so it's got to be there and i really i believe in that i believe that it's it's got to be balanced right so can i be the reason i turned producer was i felt like i had that skill or i have that skill where i can balance it in a way that the art doesn't get bastardized by the commerce yeah. and the commerce doesn't suffer because of artistic integrity yeah. and pain right so that's what i do it so i like to walk that path i feel like both need to it's almost like that yoga pose where you're pushing your leg against your hand yeah. and your hand's going to pull your leg back but your leg's got to push your hand yeah. it's that yeah. right i feel like that's the opposing forces of resistance that have to keep both in check and strengthen each other yeah just wow, I, i was visualizing that yoga into yoga but yeah so basically i like that i, I don't know how we started talking about this but that right brain left brain kind of balance i like and i feel like see here's the thing man like us taking a pause us being lazy us getting time to chill to think to strategize it's a luxury man yeah it's a luxury we didn't have that in the first 10 years we were working yeah. cuz we were working, working yeah right we had to pay bills and we had to do things and and fortunately for us we work we got lucky we worked our way uh worked hard we 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 reached a place of privilege yeah there are two kinds of privilege in the world one that is inherited and one that is earned i don't care how you got yours yeah but you have to use it to make things better i anyway think that everyone's everyone's mission in life should be one mine is at least that leave everything a little better than when you found it correct has right? to be we try to we don't do it we mess up with people we mess up with businesses you know we we've all been in relationships so maybe we've left the person worse off yeah. than when we found them we've yeah. been in businesses with maybe we left worse off we, we all do it but the, the intent has to be noble right and i feel that we at least have that privilege so i i don't i don't complain about it hmm. because what happens is that it's almost like pain and pleasure go hand in hand right yeah. so we we can complain and we can say that oh my god as an artist i always have this existential crisis i have so much i'm thinking what am i going to do next and i have that as well right? what am i going to do next what's my purpose am i optimizing my talent am i am i using my resources what am i doing man yeah. and this oh my god it's so difficult being me dude it's like if only you could be inside my head and that's true but that also comes with the pleasure of the fact that you actually have time to think those things exactly yeah right yeah 99% of the people don't have it right yeah and similarly for people who actually get envious of the fact that you have that you worked yourself in a position where you have the pleasure of that free time they don't understand that that comes with the pain of getting that time to think also unleashes yeah. some demons that you don't want yeah. so it comes with both i find yeah. that very interesting because on the outside you can you can from the outside you can be envious of a person's privilege yeah and not understand the pain that comes with it and yourself you can get a little too sympathetic with yourself too much pity for yourself for the pain without enjoying the pleasure yeah. so just keep that balance and realize that they will come with each other uh, so yeah man suck it up yeah. yeah i was watching the 
um there's a three part docu series on arnold yeah and he says this he said it, it, it's something people talk about how you got to think about your feelings and think about you know when you're kind of going through like a bad point you got to do that right? and he's like he said i believe in just doing the work yeah and he's like for me it's about you go into that and dig into it and and just the way i also say with the arnold voice like you know which i will not try to do try uh, no yeah. what was the line for <laughs> I believe in your leadership capabilities. Yes. Do the work, do it now. Uh, <laughs> do the work and do it now. Do it now. Um, <laughs> so he says that I'm like, and I, when you're saying this, I'm thinking about that. He said, "It's, it's a privilege to be able to actually pause and think about your life and be existential." Like privilege that, to have that pain, man. A large number of people are just generally they have to do the work to survive and to even find the opportunity to thrive later on. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm. going back to the part you said about cricketers about the fact that they had to like you know they weren't thinking about anything else when they had to kind of go for all those camps and yeah, playing all those matches and struggle to kind of get into the team and go through that and now they can talk about it yeah because they've come to that point and obviously they're going through that but yeah when they were struggling through it i doubt any of them even like had the opportunity to do it and nobody cares also na hmm cares yeah right that's the problem right we only want to hear stories of successful people uh and that's fine you don't blame anyone there is nobody who is reading an autobiography of you know somebody who just had one job all their life and didn't do anything and then retired yeah now lives in a house in the country right and that's the truth we want to hear volatility we want to hear roller coaster emotions so uh that's what we want to do but sometimes i want to hear stories of even the people who so called din make it right yeah by st- the standards of the world that's one of the things i'm always so curious about because what is your yardstick of success yeah right how can i judge your success by my yardstick right yeah nobody knows what i i could think i am super successful and uh, maybe shahrukh khan and mr bachchan who are the you know the gods of what they do maybe they think they're unsuccessful yeah in their own and you're sitting outside and if somebody if they somebody of that level of stature was to say that you know i'm unsuccessful and you'd be like what but you don't know yeah. you don't know their yardstick is yeah right they are high functioning human beings maybe they this is different and similarly you could have a guy who is just you know making a little more than survival money and is living in the kind of house they always wanted to live in and they are chill yeah and they are successful so you have to have your own yardstick don't judge yourself first of all don't judge yourself that's one but if you are going to which you are going to uh, the second thing is judge yourself by your own standards na don't judge yourself by the world standards oh the world thought that i should have had a 3 crore car by now hmm. say, but do you even want one yeah right I like want a Honda City. That was all I wanted. Th- there you go, right? Yeah. I I keep telling people. Here's it is an example again. I said so. Whenever we all we're Indian man, we all love our parents and we love doing things for our parents. Yeah. Right. We're all Suraj Bajatia kids. We love doing that. Right. So sometimes what we do is na we want to fulfill our parents' dreams, mm. but we're actually fulfilling our dreams for them. Correct. And that's what I tell people now who suddenly can do things for their parents. I'm like. do they really want to do it right like for example i could suddenly say uh, oh man my name is ormani i want to buy my dad a ferrari right because the ferrari is like oh, growing up that was the car but dad's going to say gurgaon mein kahan chalaunga isko main <laughs> what am i going to do with a ferrari in gurgaon dude it's going to be in a pothole there will be 10 people to take yeah. it out yeah right what am i going to do with this thing yeah. so you have just ended up straddling them with something which you are feeling really good about but they can't even use yeah now change that ferrari to whatever it is right you say your favorite place in the world to go is new york so my dream is to take my parents to new york or send them to new york wo kya karenge wahan pe unko kahan jana hai puch lo kya pata unko sirf masuri jana ho i am guilty of this because Thank my mom says this she's like i don't tell you something which i want or even like a area of something i want because i know you will try and get it for me <laughs> so she'll say oh my, my basically I'll see her phone had some issue because she'd put too much sanitizer on it through the pandemic so you couldn't hear in the earpiece so I bought her a phone yeah. she's like I don't tell you these things because you <laughs> will just buy me something I don't want I'm okay with that phone I talk on the speaker phone anyway the speaker phone works fine um and it's that you're doing it for yourself 
and yeah you do and i'm i'm still saying that you're still not that guilty of the fact because you've still bought something which is of utility and she yeah. knows how to but if you had suddenly said oh your voice is not clear and i'm going to put a satellite antenna on the terrace that of your house and then <laughs> you're going to have to maneuver it with azimuth and, la- and you're like dude <laughs> like i t- <laughs> what i don't want this yeah i did that to her i recently bought her something um, because i realized she wasn't streaming um, content as much so i bought her one of those and she's like my tv doesn't have and second hdmi input so i can't even use it i don't know what to do with this right? yeah. it's like if you were to give somebody a cd today yeah. hey like let's listen, listen to my cd man it's like what, what, what is, is this yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you had to pick one story that sounds orange I, i don't know i didn't know where you were going with that sorry <laughs> if you sorry. had to pick one story that someone told you on break of the champions we'd say that okay like you said you like stories that that surprises thing once like, i didn't know this about this this person thought like this was there one which stuck with you or Ooh, i'm sure there are many but my god you don't have to pick one you could pick a few but there's a few that are, so there are two of my favorite episodes which i always tell people one is the chat that i had with bishan singh bedi hmm. bishpa hmm. it's a it's like a life lesson hmm. talking to him is like life lesson the other was the one that i uh, had with ishan sharma who hmm. just is the most heartfelt dude like ever sweetest sweetest guy bishpa told me this very interesting st- story about kirtan mm. uh how some party jis were as you know in sikhism you have kirtans that mm. people do and uh, he says the the two musicians two of those parties were talking to each other and saying ji shuru kare kirtan he says wo sangat ko aane do aur fir shuru kar lenge and the head party heard that hmm. right and then he asked them he says bhai uh, kirtan karna hai ke sunana hai hmm. she said what do you mean he says dekho agar kirtan karna hai to shraddha hai hmm. agar sunana hai to dhanda hai right yeah. so what are you doing here hmm. is this a spiritual internal act or is this a performance yeah and it's so important man in life and this actually brings me back to what i was saying like 10 minutes ago like i've never done anything that was not inspiring me or fulfilling a need for me because then it just turns out to be just commercial you just and i guess that's fine if you have to do a business and you know you have shareholders or investors to answer to employees to answer to but if you're doing it as an artist then it will bite you man in the ass and we as i said we've all done it at some point in time but the 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 dream is to work yourself into a position where you don't have to do it for the wrong reasons yeah and you only do things for the right reasons so this story i'll never forget is it it has to come from here who what are you doing it for yeah right and uh, Ishan told me a very sweet story about his dad cuz it's just come back to me cuz we were just talking about doing things for our parents mm. and he says that whenever i ask my dad ke main kahin ja raha hu and they stay in delhi mm. he says whenever i ask my dad ke main kahin ja raha hu kya leke hu aapke liye so he says beta raincoat le aana he says papa delhi mein rehte ho raincoat kya chahiye aapko itne <laughs> and that just makes you think that the heart wants what the heart wants man and sometimes our how many raincoats does it have he says i don't know he says but yaar raincoat ikatte karte rehte ho मैंने कहा उनको अच्छे लगते होंगे यार क्या पता किसको क्यों क्या अच्छा लगता है राइट जस्ट लाइक आस राइट यू नेवर नो व्हाई यू देयर इज अ सर्टेन थिंग यू जस्ट वाचिंग फॉर 30 मिनट्स ऑन स्क्रीन गोइंग देयर इज नो लॉजिकल रीजन दीस आर सम ऑफ द स्टोरी देयर इज एज ऑब्वियसली देयर सो मेनी मोर बिकॉज़ आई एम वेरी फॉर्चूनेट दैट दे ट्रस्ट मी इनफ टू काइंड ऑफ ओपन अप एंड टेल मी थिंग्स दैट दे हैव सेड टू एनीबॉडी एल्स सो देयर आर सो मेनी दैट आई रिमेंबर बट दीस टू जस्ट सडनली केम इनटू माइंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द इट्स कॉन्टेक्चुअल टू व्हाट वी वर टॉकिंग नो आई कैन कीप गोइंग ऑन but this is and factually the longest episode recording of this show are you serious i always stop the show at an hour we've gone far beyond that yes. we shall get you back for part 2 of this conversation but what's the point because you won't remember that we did part 1 i will one. remember next time alone i mean you know uh, i'm not so going to hear the last of this one <laughs> it'll just be part 1 again yes <laughs> yes but thank you man thank you for doing this it's been it's my pleasure amazing man as I'm, always i i was actually a little nervous before coming on because i've been seeing clips of so many people expounding all these wonderful theories and philosophies and learnings of life and mm. i don't have any man so i you gave said, lots maybe by mistake 
मजाक मजाक में बात अगर सीरियस हो गई तो भाई को माफी दीजिएगा दैट्स वाई दैट्स एक्चुअली माई मोटो इन लाइफ मजाक मजाक में बात सीरियस हो गई करेक्ट वही ये नाइस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी वरुण एंड ऑनस्टली मैन टेक अ पॉज ऑन